Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's a glorious bright blue sky day, warm today, um, just absolutely beautiful. It's Tuesday and I'm about to get a shopping delivery. My groceries, oh well, you know, <laughs> it's such a movable feast. They don't come when they're meant to come, so, but soon, maybe, fingers crossed everybody. So I um, wanted to come on today because uh, it's Tuesday and I had my huge weekend with the Doll Club, Doll Club Christmas Party, try and say that quickly, on Saturday. So I wanted to come back and tell you about that. Sunday I went to a music concert put on that was put on by the music school that two of my grandchildren go to, a brother and sister. Oh, it was magnificent. Oh, it was wonderful, wonderful. Anyway, enough about that. We are here. And this is take two, the camera, I started the video and the camera just dropped to the ground. So fingers crossed that doesn't happen this time. I don't know if it will or not. Oh my goodness, I tell you. Anyway, let's, let's hope that everything goes smoothly with this video. Because I really want to tell you about how the party went. But before I do, let me tell you who you're looking at. Let me just do, make a little readjustment here. Because that scene is a little bit sideways there. Um, I'm a little bit fussy sometimes. I don't know what it is. It just gets in my head. There we go. That's a bit better. So let me tell you who you're looking at first of all. You are you are looking at my beautiful Lottie, and she is the Marianne Sculpt by Natalie Glick. I've had her for many many years. I made her a long long time ago. Don't ask me when because I have no idea. I've just been really bad with keeping track of any of that stuff. I guess. I don't know why. I have no reason. I'm just silly. Anyway, so here she is, and she's wearing this absolutely stunning outfit that I have not shown before, not used. This is the first time it's been used, and I've had it for years. It's a beautiful tartan, a heavyweight cotton tartan. It's actually lined as well. It's a, like a green, navy, cream tartan, and um, it's a bubble romper. And the sleeves are really cute. They're a puff sleeve, but they're more like a cap sleeve. So they're like a mini puff sleeve, sleeve which is adorable. And but buttons down the back and here between the legs. And it has some gorgeous smocking at the top across here. Oh, and a collar that you can't really see because my Lottie doesn't have much of a neck, but it has a cream Peter Pan collar that's got that's piped around the edge in the same tartan as the as the bubble romper and I have put on some socks which are white with navy trim and a bit of lace and then just a navy headband just a little one on her head she's a painted hair baby so it's very easy for me to put stuff on her head oh, it's really wonderful anyway that's what she's wearing so now that we've got that out of the way um, let me tell you how the Christmas party went we went very early. My friend Kim was picking me up and she already had collected one lady who came super early. So instead of leaving at quarter past nine, we left at 10 to nine. So um, it, was, it we got to the club very early, which was great. We just sat in the car and talked until the doors opened at 10. And then we unloaded the car and, and went inside. And oh, it was lovely. The tables were set up as I asked them to be in three long rows with I think we it was 20 per row but we needed to take a table off the end of each row to use for our in our competition section we use um we need a lot of tables for that not enough for set up so we we pinched a bit off so I think we probably maybe had oh I can't guess I don't know 15 per table yes probably about 15 per table maybe a bit more because in the end we had 49 guests which was amazing that was really fun anyway so the tables were set up we did a bit of finagling and shifting around and then we asked for the tablecloths and we spread them out just white tablecloths and um, at a certain point once things were sort of getting underway um, after people had sort of milled around and they get give gifts to each other and cards to each other and once all of that had settled down I made an introduction and welcomed everybody and then after maybe 10 more minutes I did the 
um, the presentation of the charity check to the charity representative who I did tell you about in my last video. His name is Cody and he's in his 30s somewhere. I have no idea. Early, late, I have no idea. <laughs> anyway, he came and he was, he has had, he was born with cystic fibrosis, which of course he still has, but he has had a lung transplant. And um, so he's doing really well. He has a lot of, you know, has to take a lot of medications and things and his pancreas doesn't work. So, you know, there's, it's not perfect, but he's alive and doing well. He has a professional job and, um, oh, we just had lots of fun with him. He's such a character. He was brilliant. Anyway, he accepted the check and he was really happy. Then it was time for us to eat the food, which um, was incredible. Just so yummy, set up in Bain Marie's, you know, in uh, metal dishes with water underneath that was heated and um, to keep everything hot. And there were salads. That wasn't heated. Don't worry, everybody, the salads weren't heated. But we had vegetables and we had ham and we had fish and we had chicken. And we had, I think we had beef. Yes, there was beef. I didn't have any of that. And was there pork? I can't remember because I didn't have everything because there was so, so much. It was fab absolutely fabulous. So we all helped ourselves to food. I had someone helping me because I can't manage that at the moment with my leg. Um, a sweet young girl who, <laughs> oh, she's gorgeous. She's been coming since she was a baby to the club. She used to come as a newborn baby with her mum and they still come. So she is now 30. <laughs> oh, and she's lovely. She actually did, she was part of our entertainment and she did a ballet um, dance for us. She brought her own music and wore a tutu that had lights, like little tiny fairy lights all the way around the outside. So we turned the lights down a bit, you know, the main overhead lights down a bit. And we had that for our entertainment. But anyway, we had the food. And then after the main course, we had dessert, which was, oh, so delicious. Pavlova. Now, in case you don't know what pavlova is, if you haven't come from Australia or New Zealand, or maybe in England you know what it is, but I'm sure the Americans might not know. It's a it's a yummy dessert that's made with, uh, what would you, would you call that, a meringue? Yes, it's a deep meringue, very deep, and you bake that in the oven, and then cream goes over the top of that, whipped cream, and then all sorts of delicious fresh fruits and a little sprinkling of, icing sugar over the top. It's a yummy thing. If you look up pavlova dessert, you will see what it looks like. Fantastic. Anyway, we had that. We had delicious cheesecake and we had there was something else. Oh, fresh fruit. That's right. So there was a really good choice there. <clears throat> so the lunch was fabulous. Everybody loved it. <clears throat> we sang some carols. Um, one girl who goes to the club has a friend who's a um, pianist. So they brought a keyboard for her to play and we had we were saying singing carols and um <laughs> at one point cody got up and he wanted to lead lead one of the songs so he got up and sang with the microphone he was hilarious it, it's not really a singer it's as good as you know the rest of us not exceptional and when he asked if he could do that I said of course you can Cody thinking that he would have some sort of you know operatic voice or something but he, he didn't he was just having fun up there so it was just the whole day was lots of fun everybody was enjoying themselves and talking to each other and you know just it's just a lovely day so it was a big success as far as the competition goes there were three categories um, so one category was for a blonde doll. So any, any doll that had blonde hair, which opens up the category so well because, you know, so many people, it doesn't matter what type of doll you have, you can have anything from a Barbie to a baby to a antique to a, you know, anything. It's just amazing. Anyway, so there were lots and lots of entries. I had an entry. Um, she was, the entry I had was a, a little princess doll made by pedigree which has actually white hair i figured that was as blonde as you could get and she was in the white and spotted red dress that is iconic of that doll um there were so many gorgeous dolls um that my doll didn't <laughs> didn't place anyway not for a second or for a third and there were actually lots and lots of people who came um, in the second and third category because there were so many incredible 
inflatable dolls. Anyway, so that was the first category. The second category was a doll, a brunette doll. So that opened it up again, you know, as it did with the blonde doll, that people could, um, you know, enter any doll with, with brown hair. I struggled a bit with that one because I have a doll whose hair is, isn't is blonde, isn't brown, isn't red, but it's kind of a combination of all those three, <laughs> which I know doesn't sound possible, but it actually is. It's kind of, it's not even a strawberry blonde because it's got some brown in there. So I couldn't really put her into any category, but I did have a another doll. Well, I had lots of dolls to choose from, but the doll I chose actually won. He was a, he's a SFBJ, I think it's 252. It's a powerful doll that has a face quite like um, my Katie Cruises that I love so much, you know, serious looking doll. He was gorgeous and he won. So I was very, very proud of that. And then the third category was a doll with red hair. And yet again, I was torn. What doll should I take? What doll should I take? Oh, it's torture trying to decide. Anyway, I chose a doll that was a cloth doll, sort of um, velveteen, I guess you would say the fabric was, with a mask face and paint, like painted eyes and um, just beautiful. She had five fingers on each hand that were wired so you could move them into different positions. And all the only marking she has on her is a sewn um, little label on one of her feet. And her feet are just like, were like, are like, they no toes, no distinguishing marks. They're just kind of a rounded <laughs> sort of end to a leg. <laughs> in the shape of a heel and where the toes would be. Um, anyway, on the bottom of one of those feet was this this label that was just embroidered with Made in England. And none of her clothes, which are original to her, had any label. So I'm thinking she might have been some sort of prototype or a very limited run of a doll. But she had a gorgeous mustard, mustardy brown dress with white spots and a white Peter Pan collar. And then underneath that, she had what you guys would call a onesie. It used to be called a union suit when it was, um, it's a, so it's a one piece thing and it was under her dress and it's in the same fabric as the dress. And then over the top was a felt uh, coat that was in a color that went with the dress, but I can't really describe it. Sort of yellowish, brownish. Um, and it was a, like an overcoat, just gorgeous, with a collar that had a dark velvet trim around the edge. And the coat had a black velvet or a dark velvet trim across the back of the coat. And what else? Oh, and then she had a bonnet over her red hair as well. The bonnet matched that was the same felt as the coat. And she actually won as well. So I had two winners. I was very proud of that. And, and most of all, I loved the fact that virtually everybody could enter. So we had lots and lots and lots of dolls, which is just how I love it. I love my club to be for everyone. I don't like it to be elitist. I don't like it to be snobby. I don't like it to be for only antique dolls. I like it to be for all dolls, for anybody who loves dolls, to be able to show their dolls. And when we have categories that aren't too specific, that's what we get. We get fabulous roll up with fabulous dolls you know displayed oh just amazing such a range it's very exciting so that was the competition and um it was just a, a brilliant day the whole thing we ended up we had the hall, the room hired until four o'clock so we had it officially from officially for people to arrive from 11 and then closing at four but we ended up going at, leaving at 3 30 by then everything was done and dusted so it you know I, I got up at six and got got home by the time we got me home it was sort of half past four or something so it was quite a long day but it was it was fantastic and everybody loved it and they were all thanking me so much for the party because I, I am the president of the club I have been in the past I've done three years in the past and then I had a break and during that break my friend Kim took over and during that time we also had COVID so she managed the club while we couldn't have meetings and then nobody wanted to be the president and I wasn't able to at that time 
because that's when I was, uh, you know, having all my broken bones and, you know, crashing to the ground and being melodramatic and spending so much time in hospital. So there was no way I could go back to the club until I went back just, well, a few months ago, really. And we were having the general elections at our September meeting, which is when we always do. And of course, no one else wanted to be president. And so I put up my hand. I thought, I've done it before, I'll do it again. And I'm really enjoying it mostly. <laughs> there are some struggles, but I guess that's normal. And when I was complaining to my daughters about it, they said, but, and I said, I don't remember it being like this last time. They said, mum, it really was. It was just the same. And they said, we were surprised that you put your hand up to do it again. Um, so it's good, isn't it? I just remembered the good bits and forgot all the rotten bits. And they're not really rotten. It's just, you know, it's just, <laughs> what, how can I put it? It's just managing humans, really. <laughs> that, and that's not rotten. That is a challenge. Yeah, it's a challenge. Um, anyway, so it was a great, great day. It was just wonderful. The weather was perfect and inside it's air conditioned. So it really didn't matter what the weather was like outside. Um, very much in contrast to where we used to have our, our, um, you know, our meetings and our Christmas party in a very old hall that is heritage listed. Um, solidly built out of double brick and you know beautifully built but in summer it was boiling in there absolutely over 100 degrees so we're trying to have these Christmas parties with everybody with these bright red faces oh my goodness and in winter for the meetings we had blankets and or we used to bring blankets and wear our overcoats in the in the in the hall so it's just such a relief to be somewhere that is accessible because the hall wasn't even accessible. There were steps everywhere. Um, so this place is accessible. It's air conditioned, such friendly staff there. And oh, it's just, it, the whole thing was so, so good. And the food, the new caterer did a brilliant job. So the club hired a new, not the doll club, the, it's called the Diggers Club, which is a, it's an RSL club, a returned servicemen's league. So they, these were clubs that were created after, I think, the first, either, either the First World War, but most likely the Second World War, for, it, you know, soldiers who'd returned to, well, let's say, normal life in inverted commas, um, when they could gather and, you know, feel that somebody understood what they'd been through. So that's what they were de developed for. And now they're more like community, community clubs. Although, you know, returned soldiers still go there, of course, every, but anybody can go there. So that's the type of club it is. Um, yeah, so it's all, it's accessible. It's got air conditioning. It's got cafes where you can get tea and coffee. And, oh, it's just wonderful. Anyway, it was such a good day. I think I've raved on it about that enough. I hope you've enjoyed seeing this cheeky little girl who never really wants to look at the camera, does she? She's always looking somewhere else. But... You know, that's her nature and I don't want to change her nature. If that's who she is, we have to accept it, don't we, everyone? So that is my little girl. Um, let me see if I can go closer to her face. How would I do that? I don't know. Let me think. How do I do that? Or like that and then I can move the camera, can't I? Why aren't I getting bold? Aren't I bold? There she is. Now you can see her properly. She's still not really looking at the camera. Why don't we just turn your head a little bit? Oh, there she's looking. And now you can almost see the other side of her collar because she's so chubby and she's got a double chin that you can't always see her collars. But there it is. There's the other side. So there's my beautiful little Lottie, my Marianne sculpt by Natalie Glick. Yeah. So thank you, everyone, for being here. I'm sorry it's been a bit of a, a long yakety yak, but I really wanted to come back and share the news with you. So here we are on this Tuesday and my shopping hasn't arrived yet. So, oh, oh, good. I got the whole video down. Plus the camera didn't fall down again. So it's been my lucky day. And um, I hope you've enjoyed everything I've talked about today and hope to see you very soon. Let's just go up so we can see the rest of that bow. How's that? That's better, isn't it? We can see your whole navy blue bow now, my darling. All right, everyone, T please take care of yourselves. And um, hopefully I'll be back with you very soon. Bye-bye.